Hello, I'm Justin Bright, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program version 1.2, in which I am trying to make Kerbals a multi-planetary species. Let's jump right back in. We're doing pretty well. We've launched two ships, uh, had our first suborbital craft, and then an orbital one immediately afterwards, so we're doing pretty well, I think. Let's see, all I have left is a mission to orbit a stack decoupler, which I don't think should be too much of an issue. But what else can we do? Oh, well, already they want us to explore the moon. That's very, uh... That's very forward-thinking of the world first society. So let's grab that. And we can test a thumper on a really goofy orbit. Or a really goofy trajectory. Well, that could be fun. Let's try this. We'll do this one first. We can knock out our part test contracts and earn some funds. But first, we have a whole bunch of science to spend, so let's do that. Let's pick up some life support parts from our previous science buy. Grab some stability bits. And the next set of rocket parts. Very exciting. That leaves us a little bit left over. More science. Science begets science. All right. So, we need to orbit and we need a thumper in a suborbital trajectory. But we can skip the VAB. Here we are with uh, my third ship, which is wobbling terrifyingly but hopefully that'll be fine but let's see if I can actually get this sucker to orbit we are hopefully going to do some part testing with this but let's see how that goes this thing is on my aerodynamic and attempting to brute force its way into orbit The challenge with this launch is that I'm trying to both trying to satisfy two different things. I'm trying to get this uh, this back thumper uh, into a suborbital trajectory, 280 to 290 kilometers um, suborbital, which is going to be pretty high up there and uh, is going to require quite a bit of delta V going straight up to make that happen. And once I'm up there, I still want to be able to test this um, stack decoupler. So let's find out, I suppose. He smashed apart some solid rocket boosters, grabbing a crew report. And I still have sweet, sweet science packed away for testing. In my ideal scenario, I managed to get almost straight up, and then I fired this uh, solid rocket booster going sideways at tremendous velocity. I better keep going pretty much straight up if I have any hope of reaching that apoapsis, however. Because I don't think I'm quite going to make it. even close. But, when in doubt, cheat! Let's fire this booster headed straight up, and then let's see if I can't use it to complete the test, even after, after it is spent. Let's turn this to get a little horizontal velocity moving. Get a little too much. Keep going up, keep going up. Oh dear, should be fine. All right, so we've got that. Now we need to get as much sideways velocity as we can possibly muster. All right, this is um, this is a hell of a thing.
So when we get to 280,000 meters above carbon, do, 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 watching the beautiful planet recede below us. And here we are in high orbit, which gets us even more science. So hopefully we'll be able to take this home, even if uh, my other missions fail. But I think we should be able to get them. And... Run test. There we go, we got it. V <coughs> victory! Test complete. We got some good data here. I should hope so. Now, I have two of these stack decouplers, but I only want to be able to use one. I was hoping that I was going to be in orbit, so I don't think that I'm going to be able to f accomplish this one either. Hmm. Yeah, it looks like we are not going to finish both of our missions today, but we have gotten some good science and we've made some money. We've earned our money back. So let's actually just take this right back down and we'll call this a high-speed re-entry test. Accelerate through this. This does not have me concerned in any way now that I have the uh, lovely service bay. Thing I'm missing for science? No, I don't think so. This is my take on retro repulsive, retro propulsive. Uh, heat shielding on re-entry. Oh dear, that's getting warm. Uh-oh. No, 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 no. Oh dear. Here, kick that off. Perhaps that'll let me... Okay, we're through the danger zone now. Let's tweak this up a little bit so that I can try, at least, to... I'm trying to push myself up away from my prograde marker so that I'm not quite firing myself in a bullet shape directly at the ground. I'm trying to get the tiniest bit of lift to slow my descent. worked well enough. And we're landing in the grasslands on a beautiful sunset, just barely safely. Oh! Um, what did I lose? Oh, I lost my goo capsules. Oh, that's a shame. I guess they were slightly clipped through the floor. Well, let's grab another atmospheric pressure scan and call it a day. All right, 43 science earned. And a little bit of money as well. Jebediah has gained a level. Well, nighttime has fallen over the KSC, so let's just move that to morning. I like to launch in the daytime. And also, it's anytime I have a good excuse to roll time forward, I think uh, we'll be doing that. It makes life support a little bit trivial if you can launch every other second. All right, let's look for more missions. We still need to get this silly contract finished. I think I may need to focus on just doing that and not try to accomplish all these silly things at the same time. 
All right, I think we can make this happen on our next mission, and we'll just have that be what we do. Actually, we could probably get a flyby of the moon at the same time. Yeah, let's upgrade our tracking station to level 2 so that we can do uh, maneuver nodes, and that's going to allow us to do all sorts of fun stuff. All right, pick up a little more science. Well, if we want to get to the... If you want to get to the moon on 30 parts, we're going to need some bigger fuel tanks and an increase to the thrust of the Pug and the Valiant. Alright, let's throw this silly monstrosity out. Alright, so now we're going by the moon. So let's rebuild our little service module a little bit here. Yank these guys out. Let's throw in a little mini pack of supplies. We may not actually need it for this particular journey, but I feel like it's a good practice to get in. We want to make sure our Kerbals have plenty of snacks for their journeys. That's a fun little service module and only takes up 11 parts. Now, the problem that I keep having is I keep flipping this thing over, and you see the center of mass is a little bit high. So we don't actually need a heat shield as far as the re-entry. However, you'll notice that they're very heavy and they bring that center of mass down, which will make this more aerodynamically stable as I re-enter going forward. Which is probably not the best reason to pack a heat shield, but it is what it is. So, we've got this. We are going to have a small, a small pug stage, which is going to be used to get us to the moon and back, or around the moon and then um, back towards uh, Kerbin. We're going to pack... And this is going to be our test article right here. Because I would like to use this as a transfer stage in between Kerbin and the Moon. We are once again dramatically over engineering this, but I'm not too worried about that. Alright, so I'm not 100% thrilled with the performance of this rocket, so what I'm going to do is you'll see I'm adding on a, uh, an extra fuel tank here, and you'll notice that my thrust to weight ratio there at the bottom of Kerbal Engineer has gone down lower, just above 1, and what that's going to end up doing is... Um, that makes it so that uh, I barely have more thrust than I need to uh, push against gravity, let, let alone to lift the rest of the rocket. So what you can do in that case is throw on some extra boosters and their burn will go alongside the same burn as the liquid fueled engine and uh, give you that extra thrust that you need um, and give you that efficiency and that'll give you a lot, let you pack some extra delta V. You just kind of tweak it down so that they don't push a little too hard. I find that 1.3 or so is very, uh, very good in the atmosphere. So it'll be a little less in aerodynamic, but I think that'll work out just fine in this case. All right, so I think that is just about good. Let's give this one a new name. Call this Ranger 1, since this one's flying by the moon. Save it. Last little look here. Check my staging one last time. Yeah, I think this I think this should work, and it should be a little over-engineered, and I'll talk through each of the stages as we go, but I think this is uh this is a pretty solid design for doing what we're trying to do. Let's get Valentina involved as our first translunar pilot.
And here we are, another lovely morning on the launch pad here at KSC. Are we ready in three, two, one? Launch. Now you can see the thrust to weight ratio put in there. It gives it a nice smooth lift off and doesn't uh, doesn't have me leap off too far, which could cause drag, and it doesn't give me too slow of a lift off, which uh, makes you suffer a lot of uh, losses from gravity. So nice, nice easy lift, and it gives us plenty of extra fuel in that center first stage to uh, give us that extra delta V to get to orbit. Oh, it's still so wiggly, and I'm still letting this go a little bit. Fortunately, I'm now starting to get enough parts and uh, fuel tanks and boosters to make up for missed gravity turns. Honestly, I should be poking this eastward as soon as I get off the launch pad instead of uh, waiting as long as I was, but sometimes I end up just getting lost admiring the rockets. Boosters. No, oh, they always smash. Crew report and a temperature scan. The crew reports wiggliness. This rocket is not unlike a noodle. Pretty soon. Not yet, but pretty soon. Uh, I should be unlocking auto struts, which basically replaces uh, Kerbal joint reinforcement in my mind. And to make rockets properly rigid and not floopy. All right, time to start thinking, where is the moon? Probably on the exact opposite side of the planet. Well, that's quite all right. ourselves at the horizon and bring up that periapsis. And I think we'll be in quite a good spot. Got tons of Delta V left over. So we'll be able to accomplish our contracts, get our lights on here, get uh, this burn completed here in a moment. It looks like the drag on my lower stage, on my booster specifically, uh, has definitely impacted my total Delta V budget. Uh, so it's good that I packed as much as I did because this is not getting us right next to orbit, which is what I expected it to. But this will leave us in a very good place most of the way towards orbit and able to finish up our um, ascent with the Terrier. which just looks fabulous with the pork jets in pork jets overhaul. All right, so hold this prograde with the shiny new improved SAS, which I feel like works quite a bit better. And my goal here is to get myself into orbit and then we'll use m the rest of the fuel on this to get ourselves into a transmunar injection. We need to kick off from here in a 180 to 190,000 uh, meter altitude. So we'll just cap that off at 185. And let's plan out the rest of our ascent. Let's see, so about 45-ish degrees. There we have it. But let's see if we can't get ourselves a free return. Not that I expect that we'll need it, but I always think it's a little more fun. Do, 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 do. Go a little bit faster, and there you go. Nice high flyby of the moon will bring us right back down into Kerbin's atmosphere on the way back. Down, the 
I do that by going out in front of the moon's orbit rather than behind. Alright, so I think... Let me see. Question now is can I get away? I think I can. I think I can get away with just going straight into this transmitter injection without pausing to circularize my original orbit. How are we doing on everything? We got battery power, we got plenty of supplies, an electrical charge, habitation. Close that up so it stops burbling at me. And let's move on forward. Actually, I just had another idea. Let's do this. Let's adjust this maneuver so that I can actually do what the Saturn missions did and smack my translunar stage directly into the moon. It keeps, the, keeps our orbital paths clear. And it actually matches what the uh, some of the Saturn missions did. Not all of them, but some of them. Uh, the S-4B stage, after it had deployed the lunar lander and the Apollo service module grabbed it, it would um, continue on its path to one, ignite. And it would continue on its path and then it would... Uh, smash into the moon, which would give us some um, impact science and uh, keep keep the orbits clear. Burning for moonrise. I love that that works in real life just as it works in Kerbal Space Program, that if you turn on your engines and burn for the moonrise, you will actually arrive there, give or take a few days. Right, coming close to cut off. Slow it on down and chase that maneuver node. There we are. Ah, well that turned out so perfect. I am considered in orbit by the game and I am just about to reach 180,000 kilometers. And when I toss this tank behind me, this translunar stage is going to smash into the moon, and I will carry on with my orbital maneuvers with the little pug. I love it when a plan comes together. So let's separate this, and we will see... We will see the rest of our transmunar flyby in the next episode. I'll see you next time.